gun gun sword. He and I, things sort of just shifted. And once the cops arrived, I was just concerned about where my wife and, and children were. And we just, you know, let's get to the car. Um, within 20 minutes, my children are on, online, of course, saying, hey, this is a, a deal. And my wife said, he had a gun. I said, well, that's what criminals do. And she said, no, it was a, you know, a, a, a real deal, you know, and so uh, we, we all... You're still, you have, a, you have adrenaline still coursing through you. You're driving. Yeah. It takes hours to come down from, a, from, 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 from an adrenaline rush like that, especially one where there's no thought involved. There's no premeditation involved, right? That's my question was so, so, do you have any recollection of, from the moment you realized that there was an active shooter, it wasn't fireworks, to the moment when you acted? I recall the, one of the a cop running through the crowd and chasing one of the gentlemen in black, or not gentlemen, but... Um, For lack of a better word. Exactly. Um, so, um, once that happened, they kind of came into my square, if you will, since we're walking through a large crowd. And, you know, I remember that, and then they yelled, get him again. And I was thinking maybe it's the same guy, or I don't know what I was thinking, <laughs> to be honest. I suspected that. Yeah, I'm sure <laughs> glad he was here to... <laughs> to what were you doing? What, what, how, could, how do you, from the moment where you realize, okay, this is, this is fucked up, to, like, you getting involved? Do you remember any of that? I've been waiting a lot. I've, I've, I, I don't, I didn't think much, but I was happy to do it. Paul, do you remember that, that, that gap? Uh, there wasn't much of a gap. I was walking with my daughters toward the bridge, and uh, there was a gentleman on the right side just screaming out of the top of his lungs to stop this guy, tackle this guy. And no sooner I looked to my left, I see Trey lunge at him, and he somehow slipped away. And I was just right there, and that's when I jumped on the suspect's back and took him down to the ground. We rolled one time, but as I was taking him down, I see the weapon fall to the ground. So right then and there, I know it's on. He has one weapon. He's wearing a big bulky jacket. He could have made pockets in there to hold another handgun. You know, you got one, you could have multiple. So right then and there, I knew I had to keep him down and I had him face down. Shortly after that, Trey was on him, and we were, as, as much as we were fighting to keep him down, he was fighting to get up. So we knew we couldn't lose, and we didn't. We held him down until law enforcement got there. And there was no thinking. Like I said, you know, if you had to think, don't do it. It was just a reaction Trey did and a, and a reaction that I did. And you guys never met each other before? No, sir. And you will be connected for life? To him. <laughs> yes. And you had your kids there by your side, the most vulnerable things on the face of the earth, the things that you're most, most obsessed with protecting as parents, and yet the thing to do was to neutralize this, 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 this moment for everybody's safety. And, um, I shouldn't be doing any talking, I'm just kind of like, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure like what those moments must have been. So, um, I've been fortunate to know these guys now for, you know, like 36 hours. We met Friday night when I, when I first got here and we've been eating and drinking, mostly drinking. <laughs> but a lot of eating and a lot of laughing and a lot of talking ever since. And um, so I, I have the good fortune of, 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 of being able to pull some information out of them that I found fascinating. So, how long after law after you passed this this motherfucker over to law enforcement were you out of there, boss? I I said, where's where's your mom and the kids and I? We we found the vehicle and we were we were in our car within ten minutes of that video. Paul. <laughs> yeah, I was the same way. I uh, was there with my three daughters. And after, like you said, the law enforcement came over, relieved us. I got up. Just seeing my two older daughters were right here. My youngest daughter was over here, huddled. 
I gathered them. I don't know, I think we stood there for maybe a minute, maybe two minutes at most. And I told my daughter, she said, okay, let's go. So we were maybe 15 minutes, because it was about maybe a 10 minute walk over the bridge at, at most. To get to the car. To get to the car, yeah, and then we were on the, we were on the road. So 15 minutes tops, we were out of there. And um, could you tell us a little bit about, Trey, you mentioned that your daughter is online as, as kids do, do you know, they get, and they realize, holy shit, we were just in the eye of a yeah, hurricane. It was definitely a, a different experience for a family to have. Um, as my oldest son, actually, he um, was taking videos. And he was actually taking a video and some gentleman pulled him away. And I said, did you get a video? And he says, I think so. And he shared it to me through, the, through his Apple phone of mine and it was all blurry. And I said, well, that's no good. No, it, it was good. It was a good video. And they we just had a good time. They're, they're, they're older boys and they're, you know, they're enjoying the new new attention. And, you know, we've we've had a little bit of time to it's a very sobering experience. I know the city of Kansas City has had a lot to deal with even since then. And uh, yeah, we just you you've just been a complete class act by having us here and we can we can thank you enough. My honor. Meet you guys. But now, check, check this out. Paul was telling me he's driving. He lives in Omaha, Nebraska, so he's got a two and a half hour drive home. He's driving, you know, uh, holding on to the steering wheel probably a little tighter than usual. And uh, his kid's phone started. Tell us about that. Yeah, so we're driving, and uh, like I said, we stood there for about two minutes at most, and nobody came up to acknowledge me after the law enforcement came to cuff the suspect. So nobody looked my way or my daughter's way. Nobody came over, nobody talked to us, got our information, got our names, nothing. So I'm like, okay, let's go. So we're on the road for, I want to say 30 to 45 minutes, and out of nowhere, my phone starts ringing. Tell one of my daughters, you know, who is it? Oh my God, it's just a number, Dad. I said, well, answer it if you want to answer it. You don't have to. But then my two oldest daughters' phones start ringing. I mean, we gave no information to nobody. Nobody knew my name. Nobody knew my daughter's names. Next thing you know, we got national news. We got local news. Everybody's wanting an interview. We get home. They're at my house within. 15 minutes, I mean, interview after interview, so, I mean, before we knew it, it was funny because my daughters were writing down what time and who for an interview when we got home. And before you know it, my daughters <coughs> literally just taking phone calls from my phone, from their phone, writing all this information down, and they look up, they're like, you know, we're almost home. I mean, they, they were all occupied with all that information, writing down who's, you know, uh, Today News, I mean, local news, it was Telemundo, I mean, it was, it was Sports Center, ESPN, it was just, it was crazy. So they were so occupied with writing all this information down, they didn't realize I was doing maybe 90 on the way home. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but when he told me that all of a sudden their, their, their three phones started ringing and there was no way they spent any time at the site exchanging information with anybody. So my first thing, I still don't understand how it happened, but then he said, well, it's probably, you know, social media is so, like, they, they got our pictures, and they start, like, trying to figure out who we are and stuff, and they track you down. And, and uh, you know, like, uh, I guess, you know, that's one of those things where Apple has all of our shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, they'll, they'll find you if they want to. And, uh, that, that blew me away. Um, I might not ask you um, a, a tricky question. You don't have to answer if you don't want to. Have you heard from the Kansas City Chiefs or front office yet? Um, we haven't heard anything from the Chiefs, um, but we didn't. We didn't come to Kansas City to hear anything from the Chiefs. We came here to support the Chiefs, of course. And you know that's, that's where we stand. Or I do.
bro. And you're going to be Kansas City Chiefs fans for the rest. You have been Kansas City Chiefs fans for your whole lives, and you're going to be for the rest of your lives, right? I would hope so. Well, I'd like to just uh, personally, this is Ron Perlman looking at my own camera over there. This is being recorded. If you are working the front office of the Kansas City Chiefs, uh, you might want to thank these motherfuckers. <laughs> out to you, but maybe you can check with your lawyers and realize you know you shouldn't get involved with with you know with uh, unsolicited heroism. I don't know, but that's fucked up. <laughs> we live in a world where if you can't, you're afraid of what your legal uh, you know uh, ramifications are. I <laughs> thank you, the two guys that prevented so much more carnage then we, there's, there's much more that we got to fix in our fucking society than that. But, um, signing autographs at my Tenaldi. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that was thank you for that. You know how to share that? So if you press stop <laughs> and then it gives you the option to share it. Yeah, the X button. This is the thing I have so much trouble. If you've seen my Instagram lives, it usually takes me, this is my finger trying to, I finish my rant like, motherfucker, fuck you, and then look. It takes me 20 seconds to find the X button to stop the thing. And then at the bottom it says share, and it'll go back, it'll, it'll post. No, no, I don't need no caption. The, the, the video will speak for itself. Well. Anyway, uh, thank you for uh, your graciousness. I know this was the Sons of Anarchy panel, but um, you know, the Sons of Anarchy purported to be a show about a bunch of badasses. <laughs> you know, you may want to meet a couple of the real deals. flashing at us, but is it okay with you? We just do one more quick question, and we'll get you guys back to your booth. All right, so we'll do one more question, uh, and preferably a question for both of these gentlemen, if possible. What's your name? Hi, my name is John. Um, you know, Martin Scorsese has his Robert De Niro, Guillermo del Toro has had his Ron Perlman, going all the way back to Kronos, Charlie's, you've also worked with him through uh, Crimson Peak, so what's that? been like with that collaboration over the years that keeps pulling you back to working with Guillermo del Toro? It appears that del Toro found his Leonardo DiCaprio because, uh, <laughs> you know, his I don't know, maybe he'll come back to De Niro, <laughs> but uh, right now I'm not getting any phone calls. <laughs> <sighs> Me neither. <laughs> I think we just made some news. <laughs> well, unfortunately, we are out of time. But before we do wrap this up, we are going to take a big group picture with everybody. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you again.